Okay, this video is, does pizza and soda pop make you stupid? And we're going to be going by this diagram right here. So this is a neuron in your brain in the hippocampus, your memory center. This is the presynaptic neuron, and it releases a neurotransmitter here. Here's glutamate. Glutamate is the neurotransmitter, diffuses across the synaptic cleft, and it'll bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. Uh, this is the AMPA receptor. Here's the NMDA receptor. Okay, so when you eat the pizza, it's got lots of fat, and the fat will cause blood sludge and rouleau formation. That means sticking together the red blood cells. That will drop oxygen delivery to the brain cells by in the ballpark of about 15 to 20 percent, you know, based on the Peter Quo data, for example. There's also, you know, different data like Roy Swank. He felt that in his animal studies, you could decrease oxygen delivery as much as 35 percent to the brain cells. Um, that was like in hamsters, I think. Uh, so anyways, you can say it seems pretty reasonable, 15 to 20 percent at least in that ballpark, okay? In addition, the fat will cause inhibition of the uh, mitochondrial electron transport. So that leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, and this process leads to insulin resistance. That's the number one most important cause of insulin resistance is high-fat meal and especially saturated fat. Okay. What that means is when you have mitochondrial dysfunction, this postsynaptic neuron is less able to make ATP. ATP is the energy currency of a cell. It's like a $20 bill in a cell. So here's the abbreviation, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay. In addition, in other lectures I've talked, i got lectures on all this stuff in more detail, but the general principles here. The high-fat meal will also damage the endothelial glycocalyx. That means the lining of the arteries. And when that is damaged, that will increase blood-brain barrier permeability. So that's a big deal because increased blood brain barrier permeability means that toxins in the blood will have increased access to the brain tissue, to the brain parenchyma. Okay, the high sodium, high salt, sodium chloride, the sodium inhibits endothelial nitric oxide and that is what makes the vasodilator nitric oxide. So you will get a vasoconstriction effect, meaning a narrowing of the artery. It constricts like a boa constrictor, clamps down, tightens the artery, makes it more narrow. That decreases the oxygen and glucose delivery to the tissue. It also makes the heart have to pump harder to try to compensate, so it causes hypertension. Your body has to balance its cations. That means positively charged ions. So the more sodium you eat, the more you will piss out of your body your potassium, which is the good stuff, the vasodilator. Okay, the excess, excess right here just means excessive amount. So the excess sodium will throw off cellular plasma membrane ion pumps. There's there's, here's your ion pump. It's the potassium sodium ATPase. This typically will move potassium into the cell and pump out sodium. And this creates an electrochemical gradient. The electric component of it is this negative charge or negative 65 millivolts. Okay, the uh, chemical component of it is there's more sodium outside the cell than inside the cell. And both of these things make sodium really, really want to come into the cell. And that energy um, that could be obtained by allowing some sodium to come into the cell can be coupled to pumping out of calcium here. Ca2 plus is calcium. Na plus is sodium. Na plus comes from the Latin natrium for sodium. Okay, uh, K uh, comes for kalium, the Latin for potassium. And Ca2 plus is calcium, Okay, meaning that it's got a 2 plus charge on it. So anyways, the way your cell pumps out calcium is by using this electrochemical gradient of sodium. And the relevance is that you want to keep your sodium and potassium numbers in good shape, which you do by eating a plant-based diet, because that makes you effective at pumping out calcium when you want to. If you cannot effectively pump out calcium, what that happens is you get increased brain cell activation. What that means is you'll get increased amount of glutamate. These are the glutamate vesicles, neurotransmitter vesicles, um, plasma, you know, I mean, excuse me, phospholipid membrane enclosed uh, glutamate neurotransmitters that then when there's high uh, cytoplasm calcium in the presynaptic neuron, they will send these vesicles to the plasma membrane, they fuse with the plasma membrane, and they release glutamate into the synaptic cleft, which diffuses across to the postsynaptic neuron, and it activates these receptors. Again, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, meaning that it increases activation of the postsynaptic neuron receptors. Okay, so here's AMPA type receptor, but more importantly, here's the NMDA, re NMDA receptor, okay? Notice that the NMDA receptor is also activated by binding of glycine, and that will become a big deal in just a moment as we'll go into. Okay, um, 
The non-organic corn is also typically sprayed with atrazine. Why is there going to be corn in there? Corn is used to sweeten just about every processed food, like high fructose corn syrup, for example. Atrazine is a mitochondrial inhibitor. So by inhibiting the mitochondria, which is where most of the ATP in a cell is made, you know, like more than 80% of it, your brain cell is less able to make ATP. Okay, so we're depleting the energy production in this postsynaptic neuron and in the presynaptic neuron, but especially in the postsynaptic neuron. That is a big deal because this neuron's got a lot of work to do and it needs that energy. Okay, the processed food usually contains MSG, monosodium glutamate, or MFG, manufactured free glutamate. And the key word there is glutamate. Glutamate, that's an excitotoxin. This, uh, that's this stuff right here, glutamate, going across to increase activation in the postsynaptic neuron. And that's a problem because the more glutamate that goes across this synapse, the more metabolic activity happens in this postsynaptic neuron. Okay, it's when it gets uh, this glutamate binding to these receptors, it causes this neuron to fire an action potential. So it's got tons of en energetic work it has to do. There's a whole long neuron that's beyond our field of view here. Okay, um, so you increase glutamate neurotransmitter at hippocampal synapses. The hippocampus is the memory center of the brain. Okay, um, you get increased neuron metabolic rate, which means increased energy demand in this neuron. Okay. And it gets, it'll just keep getting worse. Non-organic processed food usually contains soy. Soy is used as cheap protein in most processed foods. It is sprayed with glyphosate. That is a herbicide that also functions as an excitotoxin. You can remember glyphosate. Think of it as gly as in glycine with phosphate. So this gly as in glycine is this gly as in glycine right here, binding to the NMDA receptor on the postsynaptic neuron, causing increased activation. All right. By the way, people who eat... Um, processed food and meat-based uh, diets, they tend to be low in magnesium. Magnesium is your friend. Magnesium is a good guy. It normally sits right in the NMDA receptor and blocks it, so it decreases activation of the postsynaptic neuron. That's what you want. And the kind of people who eat pizza and soda pop are the same kinds who tend to be low in magnesium at a baseline and low in potassium at a baseline. So they are more vulnerable to all these problems. Okay, And that's the way it works. When you start studying nutrition in detail, you see that you're not just screwed in one way when you eat a processed food and meat diet. You're screwed in numerous ways, like 30 different ways. It all just adds up. Okay, but let, let's just keep going for the sake of this example. So the glyphosate has an excitotoxin effect on the postsynaptic neuron. All right. Then the soda pop contains caffeine. Caffeine raises the same hormones as psychological stress. First of all, cortisol. Cortisol suppresses the immune system, makes you more vulnerable to getting infections and cancer. Cortisol increases your blood lipids, so it contributes to this effect over here of blood sludge with low formation. It causes hyperglycemia, increased glucose in the blood, which is what you need for stress to deal with an energetic physical situation in the short term. But it's not good in our patients because it then starts causing diabetic-like effects. Okay, Cortisol also increases glutamate transmission here at the synapse, so it's an excitotoxin. Okay. Um, cortisol also makes it harder for you to sleep. It has an insomnia-like effect. All right. Uh, caffeine also increases the catecholamine hormones, and that's adrenaline and noradrenaline. They're also called epinephrine and norepinephrine. This will cause increased blood pressure, hypertension, increased heart rate, tachycardia, and it will cause vasoconstriction, which means constriction, like bow constrictor, <laughs> narrowing of the artery. So do you see what a screw job caffeine is? It not only increases metabolic activity by increasing glutamate in the postsynaptic neuron, it simultaneously drops blood flow by having a vasoconstrictive effect. It's a screw job. You don't want it. And I think you'll notice if you're real stressed out psychologically, you'll decrease the blood flow to your frontal lobes. You become stupider. You become more impulsive. You sort of retrogress, if you will, to more of a mammal brain rather than a primate human cerebral uh, cortex brain. And what am I getting at? You'll notice when you're stressed out, sleep deprived, and, and hyped up on caffeine, you're more sort of physical, aggressive, because you are ready for fight or flight. That's what it's all about. You're not interested in doing sophisticated thinking. You're interested in, do I have enough energy to fight? Do I have enough energy to climb this tree and escape from my danger, to run my ass off, okay? That's what short-term psychological, physical stress is all about, and that's what it prepares you for. But it don't prepare you for uh, understanding Aristotle, okay? Next, what happens? If the soda pot might contain aspartame. Now, I realize that's a little bit adding on, piling on, in the sense that the kind of person who's drinking pizza and soda pop usually don't care too much about diet soda. But I just threw that in there for the sake of explanation. Aspartame, typical sweetener in uh, diet soda pop, is an excitotoxin. Okay, 
So what's the net effect here in the immediate situation? The acute effect is to increase the neuron metabolic rate. That means the energy demand in this postsynaptic neuron while simultaneously dropping the oxygen delivery. Okay, because all the fat sludge in the red blood cells together um, and also, you know, wiping out the mitochondrial function with the atrazine is a similar effect. You know, when we say drop in oxygen delivery, what we're really saying is decreasing the ability of the mitochondria in this postsynaptic neuron, is a mitochondria, to make energy, okay? And we're simultaneously with that vasoconstricting, narrowing the arteries. Again, dropping oxygen delivery, but we're also dropping glucose delivery. So it's not getting what it needs to make energy. Okay, and because you're going to have insulin resistance, you can't get enough. Even though you cause hyperglycemia here, you're not able to take the, the glucose into the cell in adequate amounts because you have insulin resistance, meaning that there's things on the plasma membrane. I don't have them drawn in here, but they're called glucose type 4 transporters. And when those are inhibited by the high fat diet, you're less able to bring glucose into this postsynaptic neuron. So do you see how this postsynaptic neuron is screwed? It's screwed because it's getting more and more activation of its receptors, allowing more calcium to come in, making it fire more and more action potentials. But it simultaneously has its mitochondria inhibited by the atrazine, inhibited by the lack of oxygen. And it can't make enough ATP. Okay, and it also it doesn't have enough substrate delivery because of the lack of glucose. The neuron is screwed, okay? I can tell you, I look at, you know, uh, cognitively impaired, demented brains every day, and I'll tell you, this is what I see, apoptosis. Apoptosis means programmed cell death. That means a gradual death of the neuron. What that means is, it's not like necrosis. And a, a real acute death of a neuron is called like a stroke. You block a big artery, there's no oxygen delivery, the neurons just die suddenly. Apoptosis means that the neuron dies gradually. It's gradual cell death because it doesn't have enough oxygen. It doesn't have enough glucose. It can't meet its metabolic energy demands. It just says, screw it, time to die. And it has a signal process whereby all the organelles are recycled. They recycle themselves into phospholipid-contained vesicles, and then the macrophages of the brain, the microglia, will absorb them, and they can be used by other cells, their chemical constituents. Okay, So the body's able to get some value out of it. But because they're going into apoptosis, this programmed cell death, we don't see anything on a brain MRI except an atrophic brain. Okay, I, This is what I most commonly see. Whenever I get that history, cognitive impairment, dementia, memory loss, I see an atrophic brain, and I may or may not see silent strokes. And most of the time I see just a few silent strokes, little tiny ones, not enough to explain cognitive impairment, but I see diffuse, diffuse, the entire brain is atrophic. I don't see this BS pattern of medial temporal lobe and parietal lobe characteristic of Alzheimer's, BS. I see total brain um, atrophy, okay? And so what I'm saying is everything fits the Jack Delatory theory of cerebral hypoperfusion, the mouse equivalents, and my own personal theory, Peter Rogers MD theory of neurovascular uncoupling, meaning uncoupling of the neuron's metabolic activity and of its ability to produce energy. It's a substrate to liver vascular coupling. Because normally the metabolic energy rate of the neuron should be coupled. That means matched equally to its oxygen and glucose delivery. But you can't do that when you got all these problems from these things, I consider these poisons. That's why it's pretty easy for me to follow the diet because I don't want to be a dumbass and poison myself with all this fat and salt and these toxic chemicals. Okay, so the net result is you increase the risk by eating this way of uh, brain cell apoptosis, brain cell death. Okay, and the same thing with macaroni and cheese or any of these garbage high-fat processed foods. All right, the net chronic effect is the estrogenic chemicals like the atrazine and the other ones in there are going to contribute, as well as all the fat, contributes to obesity. And they all contribute to making the person have high blood pressure, hypertension, and becoming diabetic from the insulin resistance. Okay, And that leads to progressive worsening of atherosclerosis, meaning the accumulation of blood clot in the arteries, decreasing oxygen and glucose delivery to the tissues. And you get more and more apoptosis over time, so the person gets stupider and stupider, cognitive impairment. And I can tell you, my internal medicine friends tell me most of their patients over 60 are cognitively impaired, mentally slow, kind of stupid. They're like cows, high Yes, they're just mentally not as sharp as they should be. Um, and even have, they even tell me they get a lot of the, and the patients in their 50s, okay? Uh, whereas you look at, you know, people who've been longtime vegan in their 50s, they're still vibrant and energetic and have a youthful glow of vitality that's attractive. So anyways, yes, pizza and soda pop do make you stupid, both in the acute setting and in the chronic setting. This is why they do it, because they increase uh, metabolic 
energy activity demands in the postsynaptic neuron while simultaneously dropping the oxygen and glucose to this neuron. So these neurons progressively die. And loss of these neurons, loss of these brain cells in your memory center makes a person stupid. So that's what happens.